What's up guys, my name is Portal Crasher, and welcome back to another episode of If My Heart Had Wings. In the last episode, we met our protagonist, Creeper Magoo, and we met a disabled girl and fixed a flat tire, as you can see. I fixed a flat tire from her wheelchair. And we followed her into town for some reason. So let's get back into it. This is the residential area on the opposite bank of the lake to Windmill Hill, where we, where we, where we were just now. This place is nice. I'll take you back to your... Uh, ah, wait. I say, I'll take you back to your home. Because I know where her home is for some reason. See, I really am a stalk. She says, no, it's okay. Yes, I cannot blame her for wanting to ditch me as fast as possible. It seemed like there was... Like, it seemed like she was going to say, but, before she stopped speaking. For a girl with a walking disability, just because she was shown a little kindness, she can't bring some guy she hardly knows back to her house. Why would she want to? Thank you. Because of you, I was saved. Don't mention it. If your tire ever goes flat again, call me anytime. I only said it as a joke, but she blushed and looked down nervously. Quack. Um, thank you. Hmm? If you're thanking me, you already did that just now. It was quite fun, like spending time with a friend. A really creepy friend? Yeah, me too, and I saw something unusual too. If you're talking about her, I swear. The glide oh, the glider that we had just seen was now flying in the air above the hill where we were, were just now. So did I. That's the first time I'd seen a real one. I now have some wonderful memories. If that's been the highlight of your life, then I am sorry. <laughs> she murmured quietly and giggled. Coupled with her cute and dainty appearance was her lovely smile. Well then, I'd better get going. Okay, take care. Sure. The wheels squeaked as she pushed the wheelchair along with her hands down an empty street. Behind her, the duck wearing a hat waddled waddled along with her. Hey. Hmm? She stopped her hands and turned to face me. See you again. I don't know if that's worry or like... She's like, I don't know about you. She looked troubled and embarrassed and then left without saying anything. Well, there you go. She sure was cute. My gosh. Where is she from? Her appearance was quite graceful as if she were the daughter of a rich family. A little lady with a duck? It was an odd combination, but they seemed strangely familiar with each other. Okay, I'd better go. Now I'm going to do the I'm going to the dormitory called Flying Fish Manor. <laughs> Due to certain circumstances, that place will be my new home. While walking along the gently sloping street, I looked up at the clouds moving above. Floating so freely like that, they reminded me of the glider. That distinctive silhouette had left a mysterious impression on me. I, I don't... I got nothing. This guy creeps me out, to be honest. So I guess this is the Flying Fish Manor. Who would name their house that? Huff Puff, I finally found it. <clears throat> this place, is this it? I have no idea what that says. Oh, Flying Fish Manor, wow. Decided to put that in ginormous, bold text. Just in case I would miss it somehow. There is such a big difference between its appearance and its name. Y yeah, yeah there is. Excuse me. That's like giving a tough-looking Japanese Tosa a name like Lily. At least calling it Maison du Flying Fish or something. Whew. That's why, even though I looked everywhere, I still couldn't find it. Because I thought it's not this place, I completely ruled it out, and then walked around and around this area. That's why you read the signs. Even now, I still can't believe it. So I'll check the sign one more time. <sighs> Flying Fish Manor. There's no doubt about it. Even so, I'm still not entirely convinced. Also, I'm a bit thick, and really slow at this. I mean, I know a lot about this place. Well, you apparently don't, since you don't know what it looks like. <clears throat> Ooh, is it flashback time? 
It's an old European-style building on the shore of the lake, and because its appearance is a little spooky, when we were kids, we called this building the Witch's Mansion. As a test of courage, we would often sneak into the yard. We just thought it was a rich person's residence, but it's a dormitory. Kifu Private Academy Student Dormitory. I can't, I can't just stand here in shock. Whew. Ha. <laughs> okay. I don't know what's up with this guy. I took a deep breath and stood up straight. In we go to Flying Fish Manor, the house that we supposedly knew a lot about, but nothing about. May I come in? He asks. Oh, a visitor? I love her. Her name is Lightly Dressed Girl. Oh, of course. Gotta be like that. Whoa! Suddenly, a girl in her underwear appeared before me, and the expression that I had tried so hard to straighten out crumpled instantly. May I ask your name? I, uh, uh... Why? She's the one who, sta who should be worried about having been seen in... What am I... She's the one that should be worried about having been seen, but why am I the one feeling under pressure? We don't accept door-to-door -door sales. What's up, Kana-chan? Girl wearing glasses. Where, where is she? Uh, looks like we have a visitor. A visitor? Huh, what? A guy? From inside, the other girl, this one was wearing clothes, showed her face, but when she saw me, she let out a hysteric scream. I'd look at a, I'd let out a hysteric scream if I saw me too. At the same time, the glasses she was wearing looked like they were about to slip off. Kana-chan, your clothes, your clothes! Huh? What is it? Oh gosh, I'm gonna get all these voices. What is- what is it? <laughs> Another girl appeared. Uh, oh, Yuka, this unknown boy saw Kana-chan's naked body, even though she's totally not naked. What did you say? Huh? What? Huh? No, that's not it. Just like a god of salvation, my cell phone rang. The word mom was shown on the display. <laughs> oh boy. Excuse me a minute. I quickly pressed the button to answer the call while swiftly escaping outside. Mom! I thought you'd be at the Flying Fish Manor and that things would have calmed down by now. What's it like? Well, the place is full of girls! And I saw one in her underwear. Okay, good. He's, it's a good thing he's not saying that to his mother. Hey, Mom, saw a bunch of girls and one of them was in her underwear. Of course it is. That place... Yeah? I had checked the sign over and over, but then I noticed some small writing in the corner. It's a girl's dormitory. <laughs> this is a girl's dormitory. Ah, uh, only in Japan. Oh, didn't I tell you? Did you do this on purpose? What is this? What kind of mother are you? <laughs> well, she raised you, and you turned out, like, really creepy, so... Who knows? From now on, I'm going to be this place's dorm mother, aren't I? <laughs> what? It's fine, the owner and the boarding students have all accepted it. Just now, they were screaming at the top of their lungs. Oh, did you go into the changing room by mistake? That darn mother of mine, she's enjoying this situation. Creak. The front door opened slightly and the girls from just now were peeking through. What's happening, Sanachan? He... he's still... Okay, what type of voice did I have for her? He's still there, he's still here. Uh, um... <gasps> when I called out to them like a surprised turtle, they pulled their faces back inside and shut the door. What should I do? What? What should I about this? <laughs> ah, dubs. Oh my goodness. And night has come. Well, this is the situation. Oh, so you're the new dorm mother. Okay, she's slightly... The lightly dressed girl is slightly more dressed now. Well, uh, while I was explaining the situation, the boarding students, apart from the girl in the underwear who was putting on some clothes, surrounded me but kept their distance and watched at, watched at me. This is no good, is it? A boy being the dorm mother of a girl's dormitory? That's alright, isn't it? From behind the underwear girl, she was wearing clothes now but they were pretty gaudy, were some girls that looked like they were hiding but they were nodding and agreeing. 
If nobody comes here, that will be a bigger problem. Yes, that's right. But I just thought it would be someone older and less creepy. Yeah, fearful looking girl. Yeah! Incidentally, there is now one more person than before. She was kind of timid and looked to be the same age or maybe a year younger than me. Stare. <laughs> what is it? Did you say your name was Aoi? How old are you? Um, I'm still a student. From tomorrow, I'll be going to Kifu Academy. I'm in the second grade. Heh. <laughs> you're, so you're in the grade below. Hee <laughs> hee. Hee <laughs> hee, she said. What do you mean, hee <laughs> hee? The person who came to speak to all of you is my mother, and, well, she kind of half-tricked me into accepting the job as dorm mother. My job has a... My mom has a job connected to real estate, and her company manages this property. Well then, what should we do, Yuka? Should we change? If that's the situation... The person who seemed the oldest said so, and the other people reluctantly nodded in agreement. This is just until the owner caretaker comes back, or we find someone else. I apologize for the inconvenience, but for the time being, let's all try to get along. Once the conversation was over, naturally, everyone left and went back to their rooms. Hey, I'm sorry. Everyone can be so childish, and they get carried away in front of a young guy like you. Ha ha ha, so funny. Um, I'm Kanako Shigur Shiguri. If you need anything, please ask me. Okay, so we got Kanako. That's one name. The caretaker's room is at the end of the corridor on the first floor. Thank you very much. Was all that of the... Was that all of the boarding students? There's the underwear girl and Kaneko, who is with me now. Wait, I thought Kaneko was the underwear girl. Yuka, the tall girl with the long hair, and Sana, the girl with the glasses. The timid one who came from the back is Ryuko. Man, if I hope there's not going to be a pop quiz on this later, because I'm not going to remember all these names. That's four people altogether. Ah, well, there's one more person, but she's what you might call the reclusive type. I wonder if she'll come out of her room at some point. Oh. In other words, there are five borders in total. This building is pretty big, but there are only five people living here. Come to think of it, my mom did say that there are quite a few empty rooms. It's old and a little far from the school, so maybe it's not that popular. Whew, I've worked up a sweat, so I'm going to go take another bath. Yeah. Anyway, the conversation ended well, so I'll call my mother and let her know. My evil mother, who raised a creepy child. So in the end, we somehow worked things out. Really? That's good. I'll tell you this now, though. Keep your hands off the girls, obviously. Well, what are you talking about, Mom? Well, as long as it doesn't cause any problems, it's okay. Oh, and also, I told you before, but one of them has a walking disability. Flap, flap, flap. Suddenly, the sound of flapping wings came from down the hallway. Then, a shrill voice sounded out. Wait, hat! Oh, boy. Quack, quack. Huh? Something big and white came flying down the hallway, and from behind, at breakneck speed... A wheelchair. Yep. There she is. Was the girl in the wheelchair? Wait, you stupid duck! Give my... Quack, quack, quack. The big white thing, which somehow seemed like a duck, was flapping its wings and flew behind me. The girl in the wheelchair avoided all the obstacles in her path, in other words, me, and chased down the duck like a drift racer. I was so overwhelmed by the speed that I couldn't say anything. I've got you, hat! Quack, quack! The girl in the wheelchair caught the duck at my feet and snatched away a small white cloth from his beak. Jeez, you're always playing tricks. If you do it again, I'll turn you into pecking duck. Quack. The girl put the duck on her knee and lectured him. I remembered seeing that before. However, it's somehow a lot different to the images she had during the day. In the daytime, she seemed more dainty and delicate. However, her appearance was the same. It's not often that you see such a pretty girl. Looks like, you tire... Looks like your tire is in good condition. Hmm? She finally realized that there was a guy standing there. Ah! Hello, Aoi, are you listening? Ah, uh, it's Mom, still on the phone. Brilliant. Ah, uh, yeah, what, what, what was it? <laughs> 
I was saying that there is a disabled girl, so take good care of her. Yeah, thanks, Mom. Sure, I got it. Okay, talk to you soon, Mom. Yeah, he's about as interested in talking to his mom as I am. I replied as I ended the call. Why are you... She got as far as saying that, but then realized that she has a small cloth in her hand and tried to hide it by stuffing it under her backside. Why are you here? He's the new dorm mother, Katori-chan. Kanako, who was supposed to be having a bath, poked her head out. Really? What do you mean? I hadn't heard about that. Even if I tried to tell you, Katori-chan, you hardly ever come out of your room. You mean the new dorm mother is a boy? Hey, look, hey, look. Is what I felt. Is what it felt like she was saying as she relentless point, relentlessly pointed at me. We already had this conversation a long time ago. Mm. The girl known as Katori glared at Kaneko like she was interfering. I'm the new dorm mother, Aoi Minesi. Mines, Minesi. I'm Katori Hamane. Katori seemed to meet my introduction with reluctance. Quack. This is Hat. But you know that already. Why? Hat turned to face me and flapped his wings. He's a clever duck. Clever duck. <laughs> are you really the new door, mother? Yes, that's right. So you are against it? If she says she doesn't like the fact that dorm mother of a girl's dormitory is a guy, or the fact that we're the same age, there's nothing I can do about it. Ah, oh, man, that's the face of complacency if I ever... She's just so fed up. Katori closes her eyes and quietly takes a deep breath, as if trying to focus her mind. Katori? Forget about what happened during the day. During the day? Which part? As much as possible. That's right. If I had to say... She stopped talking and started to ca and stared at Kaneko, who was standing behind, listening. Kaneko looked as if she was saying, Okay, okay, as she disappeared down the hallway. I... That I made a careless mistake and that I started crying. Oh. She's concerned that she started crying. That incident, incident was quite startling and I remember it well. It happened literally like 20 minutes ago for you, dude. Oh, well, I guess night has fallen, so... Yeah, never mind. To see a girl's tears from so close like that is something I don't experience very often. I don't know what she was thinking about it. But those tears were very beautiful. Oh man, so beautiful. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that face. Have you forgotten it? Huh? No, not yet. Forget about it. Right now. <laughs> Don't be so silly. When you say that, it just makes it even more strongly engraved in my memory. Yeah, sniff. Did you say sniff? Look, you're new here, so you don't know. Even like this, I... Katori straightened her back composed her expression and smiled. And swish with a natural gesture, she lifted her hair up. Don't you feel my cool... Alul? What's Alul? Ah, Alul. Allure. I just said it a bit wrong, that's all. Oh, I've heard that word before. Duh. I'll say it again. Let me do it again. She said that and then straightened her back and made a composed smile again. Okay, that's enough. I get it, all right? Jeez, uh, you're such a jerk. Nitpicker, low life. b b b It's not like I like you or anything. <clears throat> oh, and then she's gone. Zoom. Katori used just about every insult there is, then turned her wheelchair around. Then she hurried, hurriedly raced back down the hallway and back into her room. Quack. Along the way, Hat, who had been thrown off, chased after her and entered the room through the small door, maybe a special door for ducks, built into the bottom of the main door. I looked on in disbelief. <laughs> yep. Sounds about right. I don't need to say this, but the dainty and delicate image that she had in the daytime had completely crumbled away. A delicate bud was beginning to sprout, and we shared a fleeting love. What? 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 How do you get that? From what she just told you. For real, though. But. Cool. Uh, Alu. <laughs> right? When I remember lifting her hair and being so full of confidence, I feel like I could burst out laughing. She's so funny. 
From the beginning, everything's been so messed up. What on earth is this guy talking about? He's like launching into deep psychological, or not psychological, philosophical conversation and nothing has happened. From tomorrow, it looks like things will start getting interesting. I really felt that prediction would come true. Oh, so tomorrow things are going to get interesting. Things haven't gotten interesting up until that point, though. Anyway. Extend the little wings which fly in the sky. Oh, it's the same thing. Alright, so that's the end of another chapter. But if you enjoyed, like, favorite, and subscribe to stay up to date with the channel. And I shall see you guys next time.